now as you are as you want to be are you ready are you ready come now tired broken scared or just in need ready or not it's all right take your time if nothing else just Kinsey and Tins, so nice to have you guys here with us today. 
We're going to continue to worship because as it says in Psalm 135, verse 3, it says, shout hallelujah because God is so good. Sing anthems to his beautiful name. And that's what we're going to continue to do this morning.
Amen. Amen. That was so beautiful. Thank you, team. Oh, my goodness. I am so excited to be with you here today. My name is Betty Dickinson. Yes, you can go ahead and have a seat. Uh, I serve on the teaching team here, and I don't know about you, but I have just sensed God doing something beautiful and new among our community. And so if you are new or visiting with us, I just want to encourage you, like, you're a part of something special, and we're so glad that you're here. We're so glad that you chose to visit with us. If you're watching online, we're so glad that you chose to visit with us online as well. And if you have been around us for a while, you know that what we're about is we want to see the lives transformed and mobilized by Jesus. And I see him doing that all over the place at our campus. And I'm just so excited and honored to be a part of it. And one of the ways that we seek to mobilize people in our community is through our move out groups. And so I want to just feature some of them today because lots of them are starting to ramp up. We have lots of great opportunities. If you have not yet connected into a move out group, today is your day because we have so many exciting things ramping up with our So Community Garden. Obviously, right now is growing season. And so they're a community that is basically growing fresh produce right over on the lawn, right over across the way, and really helping to serve the needs of the community through providing uh, food. And we have our um, Elevate community uh, that they're serving their local community in Thompsonville. And so if you live near that area and you want to get connected, that would be great for you to check out as well. As well as our Kids Hope Mentoring, they're really ramping up. They have 15 mentors right now, but they're hoping to launch to 25 mentors this fall. And so if you have just had a heart for building into the next generation, this is a great opportunity to do that, to meet with one student just one hour a week to invest in their lives and just to see God grow some beautiful things from those relationships. And so if you've just kind of felt a nudge that you want to get deeper involved, you want to connect in community, this is a great way to also build relationships. I just encourage you to check one of these move out groups out. You can text the word move out to 231-642-8386. And or Brent um, Swenson, who's right here. Woohoo! Yes, he's excited. So you should be excited. Um, he'll be out in the lobby. And if you just want to connect and ask more about these move out groups, he'll be in front of our move out wall there. And so I encourage you in that way. And also this summer, we have a really exciting opportunity that Mark and Kay Mentley, they are financial coaches, and they have generously offered to provide financial coaching for free. And so if you are newly married, soon to be married, pondering retirement, or you're just in a place right now where you could use some kind of financial help or financial coaching, this is just a heart and a passion of theirs that they want to offer others. And so we encourage you um, to connect with them. This is free, confidential, non-judgmental. They just really want to empower people to live generously and to be free from financial worry. So we encourage you to connect with them about that. Well, we are wrapping up our series on um, immeasurably more. Wait, no, something else. I'm sorry. We're in a different series that I forgot the name of. But next week, (laughs) we are launching a series on vine and grapes. And I'm particularly excited about this series. And so we have a little promo video we want to share with you. So go ahead and check that out. Here in this vineyard, there isn't much evidence of life right now. Row after row, the vines, they're bare. But soon, over the next few months, things will begin to change and new life will become visible. These empty trellises will soon be filled with lush grape clusters. In some of the final words that Jesus shared with his disciples on the night before the cross, he invited them to abide, to remain in the vine. And it's an invitation that is also extended to us, which leads to fruitful living. We invite you to join us for a new series called Vine and Grapes, where we will discover the vine, what it means to abide, and the bountiful fruit we can experience in our lives when we do. Well, I am particularly excited about this series because I don't know about you, but we have a few vineyards up here that I've been in, and it's been beautiful. Just yesterday, I was with my boys. We were taking pictures of the buds just starting to come out on um, the vines, and it's been something that I've actually been studying over the last three years. I've been meeting with a friend. My name, his name is Dave Boss. He uh, is a like vine dresser, an official vine dresser who has tended vines in Napa Valley, California and here. And I've just met with him like over the last three years in these vineyards, just learning about 
viticulture and what he thinks about as a vine dresser, as I am seeking to understand kind of Jesus's words and what he meant that we would abide in the vine and that we would surrender to the cultivation of a loving vine dresser. And I just feel like more and more and more, we need that word. We need to learn how to abide in Jesus and to remain rooted in him, to bear much fruit for his kingdom. And so I'm so excited to be preaching next Sunday and also launching the series as I get to interview Dave. He's going to come here and I'm going to just ask him some questions about vine dressing. And so you're not going to want to miss that um, as we kind of launch into the series about both abiding in Jesus, but also bearing eternal kingdom fruit. So check it out next week is when we start. So at this time, I would love for you to just stand up, greet the people around you, say hello, give them a high five or handshake or fist pump and say hello. You guys good? Good to be here today. Uh, I hope you're good. I hope, uh, I hope things are going well in your life. I hope you have an anticipation and an excitement for this morning. I just got to comment on one thing that just happened. Um, <laughs> our greeter forgot the series that we're in. I don't really know what to do about this. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, she needs a spa day. Wow. Uh, no, it, it's good to be with you this morning. Um, I'm just grateful. I feel, uh, my soul feels just grateful, um, so joyful, so much going on. Uh, I want to celebrate with you this morning and just kind of show a couple things that have been happening around here that is um, just fueling the excitement. Um, and then I want to share some things later in the day that... Um, just is a source of our gratitude and, and our excitement around here. But first of all, um, you know, Betty was talking about our move out groups. So I want to show the first one. This is a, a picture of our Helping Hands move out ministry. And um, this is led by Larry Masterson. And um, if that picture, if we have that picture, uh, here we go. Um, so Larry leads a team, and some of them went and put up a handicap ramp uh, for uh, somebody this past week. It's just so cool to see, um, to see when we talk about moving out, like we talk about this on Sunday morning a lot, there's a move out wall in the lobby, like there's, there's teams of people who actually want to be a part of helping needs that exist in our community. So we celebrate this. Another one I want to show is our uh, community garden. Um, we had uh, dirt, um, brought to the garden, and then we, we spread this out, and so there were just people helping with that. Uh, this is right over here. Betty was talking about it. We, we take the produce from this in the fall, late summer and fall, and we give it to a local organization that helps provide food for people uh, who, who need it, and um, just a source of our gratitude. Like We're just excited about what's happening around here. Um, we come in here on a Sunday morning, and we come in and out, and, and there are real things happening in real time um, that is so exciting to me. Like when we talk about being the hands and feet of Jesus, these are some of the ways that we mean. There's another reason I'm excited this morning. Um, I'll show this next picture. This is why I'm excited. Uh, check this out. Um, can we just <laughs> grab a hold of that and hang on to it? Uh, 75, 80, oh my goodness, 83. Somebody said that changed, but uh, no, it didn't. It's going to stay the same. <laughs> but uh, somebody say, praise Jesus praise. for the weather. Oh, my goodness. One of the things I'm learning is that praising the Lord isn't just something that we do in certain seasons when the weather's good. So, you know, it's, it's not just something that we do when things are happening around the church. Like, that is true. We do praise him, but it's also a muscle we have to work because sometimes we have to make the decision to praise God when things aren't going well. Uh, but man, it is just a beautiful thing when we can praise God and we can look at the things that are going on in our lives or in our community and say, man, praise God for what's happening. So uh, that's my posture this morning. I'm just uh, super 
grateful. Uh, we're in a series, we've been in a series, it's called The Measure of Success, <laughs> and um, it's a series where we're looking at um, what is success in our lives. Uh, Francis Chan, uh, a great author, a great pastor, uh, makes this comment, uh, we shouldn't be concerned about failure, we should be more concerned about succeeding in areas of life that don't really matter. And so with that, we've gone and done this series and looked at um, how do we actually measure success in our lives. In the first week, we looked at Solomon. Um, By today's standards, um, he was uh, two times more uh, wealthy than uh, any other human to ever exist. And yet he writes Ecclesiastes and he says things like, it's all without meaning, You'll never find meaning, purpose, and true value in these things that you can acquire and wealth that you can gain. And last week, Jesse did a great job. Uh, she spoke about living in the moment with joy and gratitude, not living constantly till I can get to this certain point in our life or accomplish this certain thing. She, she talked about living in the moment, being able to have joy and gratitude in the, mo- in the moment. And today, I'm calling today seizing the moment. Seizing the moment. This is a message about the opportunities that we have in life, the opportunities that God puts right in front of us. What are we going to do when he provides us with these opportunities? Um, Will we waste them or will we be able to seize them? And so um, with that, we're going to dive in. But before we do, I'm going to invite our ushers forward to receive our offering this morning. Um, Can you guys give our ushers a hand week in, week out, the way they serve, love people around here? Um, Listen, thank you for those of you who give so generously to this mission, this movement. Thank you so much. Um, I'm grateful not just because we can do incredible things with, um, with your finances when we, when we partner together. There's amazing ministries we can do. But honestly, my hope is that it provides your life with a sense of freedom and purpose. Like we have a tendency to hang on so hard to the things that we have. But um, having the ability and making the decision to let go and release saying, Lord, it's all yours, I, I wanna use it for your purposes is a beautiful thing, and so I hope that you feel that. Um, so there's different ways you can give. If, uh, if you give around here, or, or if not, I'd ask for you to prayerfully consider that as part of your journey. You can text the word Kensington to 77977. You can give on the app, the website, uh, and then there's the baskets, there's also boxes in the back. But um, would you pray with me? Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for bringing us all here. Lord, just grow in our spirit of anticipation uh, for what you want to say to us through your word and through the power of your spirit. Um, Lord, as we talk about seizing the moment, um, Lord, I just say this. I, I, I can't speak to everyone here and everyone's unique journey, but you can and your spirit can. And so as we talk about um, seizing the moments of our lives, I just ask that your spirit speaks to us. Speak into our situations, um, our workplaces, our families, and lead us. We look to you for leadership and guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. You ever wasted an opportunity? Never. (laughs) The tone was sarcastic. Uh, I remember uh, wasting an opportunity. It was proposing to Kelly. so I don't know if I've shared this before, but yeah, put your hand on her shoulder and comfort her for what I'm about. No, it's not that bad. We were at Grand Haven. I was going to propose to Kelly. So we walk out to the end of the pier. And if you know Grand Haven, there's a beautiful red lighthouse right at the end over Lake Michigan. It was a beautiful summer day. We get out to the end. And in my mind, I'm going to drop the question. And we get out to the end of the lighthouse, and I can't do it. Like, I don't know what it was in me. There was just something like I was a scaredy cat. Like, I could not pop the question. And so we start walking back, and I'm freaking out. Like, what am I going to do right now? Like, the, oppor- the window of opportunity is, like, narrowing. And we get halfway back, and clumsily, I don't even know how I did it. Like, I did it. I proposed, and I fumbled through my words, and, and she said yes, but in my mind, like I missed the opportunity, like the ideal proposal at the end of the pier, right next to the lighthouse. Instead, if you ask her where we got, or where we got engaged, it was like in the middle of the pier. Like it just wasn't a good setup. You ever miss an opportunity and it was like less ideal than what you wanted it to be? 
Or you ever miss an opportunity and like you miss out altogether? Um, Calvin, my 10-year-old, 11-year-old. Oh. Yesterday, like we asked him like, hey, after hockey, do you want to hang out with your buddies? And he was in a mood and so he's like, no, I don't want to. And so he didn't plan. So after hockey, guess what he wants to do? He wants to hang out with his buddy, but it wasn't planned for. So we said, sorry, buddy, like you missed the opportunity. Has this ever happened to you? You ever like experience opportunities in your life and then and you just miss out on them? Today I want to look at three scriptures. Two are written by the Apostle Paul. One is by Jesus. And they're talking about seizing the moment. Talking about not letting time slip by, but recognizing and being intentional with every single moment that we're given. Um, for those of you that don't know or are newer to the faith journey, the Apostle Paul uh, didn't used to be an apostle. He didn't used to be a, a follower of Jesus. In fact, um, he was brought up in the, a religious institution, and when the Christian movement started emerging, Paul was resistant to it. To him, Christians, this Christian movement was, was annoying. So he actually persecuted the church. He persecuted people who were followers of Jesus. And so he was educated, he came from the right family, he did all the right things, and he was kind of suppressing the Christian movement. That is, until he had a, a, a unique encounter with Christ. It changed everything. It said that the scales fell off his eyes and he was able to see the world in a, in a completely new way. Instead of being in opposition to the church, he became, uh, besides Christ, the greatest advocate for the church. And he went to write letters that, to different churches that existed in different regions in, uh, in Greece, in, in Rome. He, he wrote Romans. He wrote First and Th- Second Thessalonians. He wrote Ephesians, Galatians. All these letters were written by a guy who was once persecuting the church. And now he becomes the greatest advocate of the church. And so we look to his letters that are in our New Testament. What did he say? What did he instruct? And he he taught two main, if I could say, categories. The first one was what Christ accomplished through the cross. He wrote, he waxed eloquent about what Christ accomplished through the cross. Like what happened there? Why is that such a significant moment in history that literally altered the course of time. The other thing he wrote, the main category is, how then do we live in response to what Christ did in the, uh, through the cross? And so in that, what I'm sharing with you comes from Ephesians 5, and this is a response, our life's response um, in light of what Christ accomplished in the cross. And so I wanna, I wanna read it. This is, it's really interesting to me, and, and, and maybe these words aren't gonna jump out to you like they've jumped out to me, but I just have to share this message, and I pray that it, it speaks to someone, that God's word speaks to someone today. Be very careful, then, how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if we could just hold that up there for a second. It's really interesting to me, and I I underlined making the most out of every opportunity. This is seizing the moment language. Making, he wanted the church to make the most out of every opportunity that they were given. Uh, I kind of did a little digging um, to figure out what he was saying and where this comes from. Uh, And in the Greek, it means exaggerazo kairos. And it literally means that, that we can show that on the screen Um, exaggerazo kairos, like exaggerate, and then kairos is time, like exaggerate time, but translated, it it literally means redeem the time, like purchase the time, like take the time that you're given, harness it, use it. The days are evil, therefore use the time that you've been given for redemptive purposes. This is what he's writing to the church. And then he says this thing about 
debauchery, and I never thought I'd actually like camp out and look at this word, but it's interesting to me because debauchery actually means something different than I assumed. It literally means excessive indulgence in sensual pleasures. Excessive indulgence in sensual pleasures. Now, it comes from the Greek, isotia, and this means, the Greek word literally means to live an abandoned and detached life. Now, if you think about what Paul's saying, he's saying, live in such a way where you redeem the time, you make the most out of every opportunity you're given. Now, don't get drunk on wine that leads to debauchery like it numbs you. Now, lots of things numb us, right? We're, we're distracted, we have things going on, we're, 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 we're too busy, like lots of things keep us away from making the most out of every opportunity. But Paul's writing, like, don't engage in things that just cause you to pass the time or numb the time. Make the most out of every opportunity. Redeem the time. There's another place that he says this. He actually says it, I think, in all of his letters to the churches. This next one, I'll just share uh, another one from Paul. This comes from Galatians 4. He says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ which, for which I am in chains. Like he's in prison because he, he is so passionate about sharing Christ with people. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. What does he say? Again? Make the most out of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Again, Paul is wants so bad. Now, this is a little nuanced. Paul wants so bad for the message of Jesus to be shared with the world. Not just people who have already heard it, but he wants the message of Jesus to be shared with others. And he's telling others who are part of, followers of Jesus, part of the church, he's telling them, help spread the word. Make the most out of every opportunity we're given. Look for opportunities to share Christ with people through what you say, through what you do, through how you serve. Like, share God's love in Christ with the world around you and don't miss the opportunities that, that God puts in front of you. Are you with me? So this is Paul. The Apostle Paul had a significant life-changing moment in his life, and he, he's now making the most out of every opportunity himself, but he's encouraging the church and followers of Jesus to do the same. The third scripture that I want to share comes from Matthew 25, and if I'd give you homework at all, or something to look at this week, I'd encourage you to go read Matthew 25. It uh, includes three parables, which is what Jesus used often to teach, but he it uses three parables, and in one of the parables, Jesus is making this statement about how, how, how he is going to distinguish different groups of people from one another. Basically, he says, one group of people is going to take like make the most out of the opportunities that they're given, and then the other group of people is gonna miss the opportunities that they're given. Now, it kind of breaks down like this. When you come across someone in need, uh, he, he said, when you come across someone in, in need, care for them, meet their need, and then, and then the other group of people is uh, not caring their need. He, he said, I was sick, and you helped me. I, I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. And this one group of people that didn't, they're like, when did we see you sick and thirsty and hungry and in, in prison? And when did we see this? He says, when you did this for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. So this is one category of people. They missed the opportunity. And then he goes and says, that there's this other group of people, though, they, don't, they didn't miss the opportunity. They made the most out of the opportunities that, that, that were given to them. They helped the sick. They fed the hungry. They, they gave water to the thirsty. They visited people in prison. I'll read it from Matthew 25. This is just a, just a segment from this chapter. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom pre prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to drink. 
something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And then the righteous will ask him, well, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? And the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for the least of one of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. You see how Jesus is distinguishing groups of people? He's saying the righteous make the most out of the opportunities that they're given. You know what freaks me out? It's the thought that God is putting opportunities right in front of me, and I miss them. Maybe I'm numb, self-absorbed, selfish, sedated. Like, that freaks me out that God would give me opportunities in my life to make a profound impact in my family, my community, my church, my world, and I miss them because my mind is focused on other things. Freaks me out. I don't know if you've ever had that thought. Like, because I don't want to miss, if God has given me opportunities, I don't want to miss those. I want to be able to step into those opportunities and make the most of them. You know what freaks me out even more? Is that the church would miss the opportunities that are being presented to us. It wouldn't just happen to me, but it would happen to all of us that, that there are some true, genuine, beautiful opportunities that we're being presented with, and we miss it. Like God's primary means by the power of his spirit to share his love, his grace, his mercy, his kindness, his goodness with the world is the church. What a travesty. It it freaks me out to think that the church is missing the opportunity. You feel that? Uh, You know what, though? I'm not here to talk about why I'm freaked out. I'm here to talk about why I'm encouraged. And I don't know if, if you know this, or you sense this, or you feel this, but what I feel is I feel and I sense that I'm a, I'm a part of a church that truly, genuinely wants to make the most out of every opportunity we, we're given. And listen, I know we can't do all the things, but we can do some things. And so I just want to share today, and, and this is kind of a celebration Because it does freak me out about missing the opportunity, but I don't feel like we're doing that as a church. And I want to encourage and I want to affirm what's happened around here. Uh, This past week, we, well, we can put a a slide up of this. Um, This is what we just accomplished this past week. And I don't, if you don't know what this is, so for six weeks since Easter Sunday, we were trying to raise money to provide two wells for the Pokot people in Kenya. And um, I, I had a moment where I thought we were crazy um, because that's a lot of money. And to do this endeavor, it was like, man, but it was such a good thing, like, we prayed about it. Instead of sending a team of people to Kenya, we said, well, what if, what if we rallied together and we tried to raise funds to provide two wells for two different villages and it, it will impact people, thousands of people for the rest of their lives, these wells. I was talking all morning with different people about this. Church, that was an opportunity. That was an opportunity and, and you gave and you showed up and you supported and you were patient with me who talked about it for six weeks in a row. And you put up with the water bottles in the, in the lobby and I, like, I just go through this whole scenario in my head and I'm like, man, there was a point where I thought, what are, what are we doing? There was a point and I, I was sharing this with someone earlier. I was preparing for what I was going to say when we didn't hit our goal. I don't know if you've ever done this, like you've just had a moment in your life where just your faith kind of like escaped you. 
But I was, I was like, what am I going to say if I'm standing up in front of you and, and we don't hit our goal? And so many of you gave. I, I look at how did we do this? Because of your generosity and because of you stepping into this opportunity, um, lives are going to forever be changed. Craig, I got to point you out right now. Uh, can you guys give Craig a hand? I, I, don't, I, don't think, um, I don't think you know what Craig did behind the scenes being on the phone with people, having to put up with me all the time. Um, but he, he helped us, and he made calls, and he asked, and, and together, like, I just feel like that was a great teamwork, and it's great teamwork for all of us. We were able to accomplish something that I think is substantial. And I think this says something more about our church and what we're a part of. I think that there are opportunities that, that present themselves to us every once in a while, big ones, little ones too, but the question I always grapple with is, what are we going to do when we're faced with a need? And I, and I think Paul is writing to the church, and he's talking about stuff like this, like make the most, like make the most out of every opportunity. Don't get carried away in your own sidebar projects, or don't, don't focus so much on building your own kingdoms that you neglect to build the kingdom of God. And I just think putting wells in Kenya help build the kingdom of God. Once a well goes in, women don't have to walk four to six hours every day. They're able to care for their family. They're able to make income in other ways. Uh, schools can be planted. Healthcare can be provided. Churches, churches can be planted. Like this, this goes on and on, and we can't fathom it here, but when a well goes in, it completely and forever changes these communities for the rest of people's lives. And I just... I, Another, another opportunity I, I, I want to talk about it is this past Monday night, about 50 of us gathered, and um, we leaned in to learn about what is Asian American culture like, and what was the Asian American culture or immigration experience like? Like, there's a, there was a group of about 50 of us that, that showed up to an event, had dinner together, and, and leaned in and learned from a people and a culture that's different than ourselves. Like, this is a win. This is an opportunity. And as much as I wanna, as much as I wanna brag, this isn't about me. This isn't about any one of us. This is about something greater that's going on in our community. And I'd put it like this, because this is how Paul talks about it constantly. He talks about how Christ is in you. That this isn't just about doing things that are Christ-like. This is about being filled with the presence and the power of Jesus. And as a result, we show Christ-like tendencies in the way that we live our lives. And I think we're doing this. And I think that there, there is, Christ is at work in us, both individually and as a community. And, and to me, it's like that's the kind of church I want to be a part of. As a church that allows God to transform our hearts and, and then mobilize through our hands in the way that we live our lives. It's just something. I'm not, you know, somebody came up to me today, and I'm not going to put him on the spot, but he's like, man, I, I, I want to learn more about this. I want to I want to follow Jesus. I want to get more involved in the church. I want to start studying my Bible. Like, like these are the conversations that are happening around here. Like, I, I want to learn more about the Lord. And to me, it's just something. There's something that's beautiful. There's something that's significant. I just feel that Christ is at work. And I never want to lose that feeling, that anticipation. Like, what's he going to do tomorrow? And so... This is what I'd like to, to, to share. This is an invitation. It's an invitation for you to pray two prayers. The first one's this, and this is in, in, in regard to seizing the moment. The first one is this. Live in me. If Christ, if the promise is Christ can dwell in our hearts through faith, that his power and his presence and his love can animate through the way we live our lives, we should be praying this prayer. 
whether it's the first time or whether you've prayed this prayer a lot, like continually, just yield, surrender to the power of, of Christ living in you. Just, and, you. and you could say it on your own terms. You could say it right now. Live in me. Live in me. It's an opportunity to live for something more than your corner of the world. It's an opportunity to live with love in your heart, purpose in your heart. Live in me. The second one is one of the, one of the prayers that I'm asking myself a lot lately. Help me to see the opportunities that you're giving me. Help me to see every day. Maybe it's, maybe it's at your workplace seeing your workplace as an opportunity to share Christ's love. Maybe it's the way you're raising your kids or, or, or your approach to your marriage. Like it's an opportunity to share Christ's love. Live in me and show me the opportunities you're giving me to share Christ's love. And these are two prayers that I would just invite you to be praying along with me. Amen? Amen. So I want to sing a song. We don't often sing hymns in this place. But can we sing a hymn today as a response? Um, I want to invite the worship team out. We're going to sing a hymn, and this hymn is about Christ in us. And so um, let's sing this together. Uh, Would you stand, and then I'm going to pray, and we're, we're going to sing this. Lord, we realize that we, uh, on our own, we just don't, <laughs> we don't have it together. Uh, and we invite you to live in us. We invite you to work in us. We invite you to help us make the most of opportunities that you're giving. Lord, I I thank you for this community. I thank you for the work that you've been doing in us and through us, Lord. I just celebrate. Um, But all glory goes to you because we know that without you, we we can't do this stuff. So, um, Lord, be in us. I pray for the person here who is, is praying this prayer for the first time. Uh, that you would guide and direct their lives and um, the way that they're discovering your purpose for their life. So Lord, be in us, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. of grace is Jesus my redeemer there is no more for heaven now to give he is my joy my righteousness and freedom my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace to this I hold can sing all is mine yet not i but through christ in me the night is dark but i am not forsaken for by my side the Savior, He will stay. 
Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Why should my heart fear what you defeated? 
Again, I just, I wanna say thank you for being a church that looks for opportunities in the world around us. Thank you for looking for them. Thank you for inviting Christ to live in you and through you. Uh, it's just such a blessing to see and be a part of. Uh, a couple things to mention at the end. Our prayer team is gonna be up front after the service. Uh, we would love to love on you, to pray with you if you're going through something. Uh, if you would allow us to serve you in that way, we would love that. Um, and then lastly, there is a spaghetti luncheon happening right after the service that our uh, student ministry is sponsoring. And so we want to invite you to that, be a part of that, support them. Um, other than that, you guys, thank you for being here. Uh, have a great day. Have a good week. See ya.